Hi friends, it's Tess Wilson. Our Catholic <laughs> life. You got the mic again. And today I'm here for a two-part book review. I'm going to film them both today. Um, but the first one's airing right now that you're watching. It is on the Diary of St. Faustina. Sorry, the Diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalaska which is called Divine Mercy in My Soul. I don't know what the title is. We're going to see the exact title when we get inside the book because they're both there. And then we're going to review the thematic concordance. Okay, so this one's going to air in a week following this one. Oops. <laughs> this one. I wrote down on my little note card here some possible themes to look up to see how easy the concordance is. That's the little note card was. That's so funny. Um, so let's get in. This is, now I'm looking for a normal book, <laughs> normal size book. Here, most of you will know what an average hymnal size is, right? And so here is the Diary of St. Faustina. So it looks like it's a small book that could fit into your pocket until you see how chunky it is. This is a chunky monkey, but it is a small size. Um, I mean, I'll hold it next to my hand. You can see it's like... It's not really big, right? But it's very, very chunky. Let's see what it says on the back. If you try and look for it in a bookstore, it would be called spiritual growth or mysticism. A mystic with a message for the new millennium. Shortly before the outbreak of World War II, a simple, uneducated young Polish nun receives a special call. Jesus tells her, I am sending you with my mercy to the people of the whole world. I do not want to punish mankind, but I desire to heal it pressing it to my merciful heart. Jesus also tells her to record his message of mercy in a diary. You are the secretary of my mercy. I have chosen you for that office in this and the next life. These words of Jesus are found in the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalaska, which chronicles Sister Faustina's great experience of divine mercy in her soul and her mission to share that mercy with the world. Though she died in obscurity in 1938, Sister Faustina was hailed by Pope John Paul II as the great apostle of divine mercy in our time. On April 30, 2000, the Pope canonized her as Saint Faustina, saying that the message of divine mercy, which she shared, is urgently needed at the dawn of the new millennium. More than one million copies of the diary have been sold worldwide. And in the diary, this woman mystic's childlike trust, simplicity, and intimacy with Jesus will stir your heart and soul. Her spiritual insights will surprise and reward you. Only love has meaning, she writes. It raises up our smallest actions into infinity. How did Sister, sorry, this time says St. Faustina grow in deeper trust and intimacy with Jesus? What promises did he make to her? Discover the answers to these questions and many more in the diary of St. Faustina. And this is printed by Marion Press up in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, the father's up there. Um, I will say it's interesting when she talks about only love has meaning, and we were just talking about that book about a study of St. Bonaventure's treatment of the Trinity, which the Trinity being love. So this book was a nice tie-in to do next. So it does say it's the Diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalaska, Divine Mercy in My Soul. So that is the official title. So it's a title and a subtitle. This time they, when they did the, the diary, on the, it's only on the inside. On the outside, it, oh no, on the outside, they did use the fancy script. Darn nabbit. I think people forget that there are people with reading disabilities and sometimes you see that and you're taken back and you're like, mm, don't think I'm gonna try to read that. It's pretty, but maybe not the best choice. Let's see here, the original Polish diary was copyrighted in 1981 by some people in Poland. I can't read that, sorry. Um, and the original Polish diary had a Nihil Obstat in Krakow, April 17th, 1979, as well as the Imprimatur was April 18th, 1979. And it lists who did it. The English translation has the Nihil Obstat. Um, Oh, it doesn't have a date for the Nihil Obstat. I'm assuming they're the same. The Imprimatur is March 16th, 1987. And we know um, a lot of people worry about this because originally it was not cool. Um, we were told not to do it by the church, but it had to do with 
a lot of bad, bad, bad translations that were circulating at the time. And so that's why I wanted to read to you that there are nihil obstats and imprimators. They are declaration that a book or pamphlet is considered to be free from doctrinal or moral error. It is not implied that those who have granted the nihil obstat and imprimator agree with the contents, opinions, or statements expressed. Um, this picture on the cover is a painting done by a Polish woman, and it was used both for her beatification as well as for her canonization. Notice to the reader. This is interesting to have that in there. It's still, this is before the table of contents, in with all the regular publication information. Notice to reader. St. Faustina's full religious name was Sister Maria Faustina of the Most Blessed Sacrament. The name indicates her special devotion to Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. In the world, she was known as Helen Kabalaska. Like, you never hear of people saying that of the Most Blessed Sacrament stuff. That is so interesting. So I've learned something new just on the publication page. Um, the Library of Congress number, ISBN BN number, mass market edition, first published in 1987. This is the 11th printing, third edition with revisions, 2014. Very interesting. Available from the Association of Marian Helpers in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Their telephone number is 1-800-462-7426. Four, and I believe their website is www.shopmercy. I'm just never sure if it's .org or .com. And the table of contents is set up the way I like. It's very clear and easy to see the title of the thing and what page number it's on. The early things are separated. I might have liked to have a little bit more separation in the diary from the other things you'll see. The diary parts, I think that this being the meat of the book should have been either a little bit of space before and after it or boldened or, you know, a different font, something to, to make it stand out more. But there is a preface, an original preface to the Polish edition in 1981, and then an introduction, then a chronology of events in the life of Sister Maria Faustina, Helen Kowalowska, and then the diary in its notebooks one, two, three, four, five, and six is how they're separated out. As well as then, after the diary, then it says my preparation for Holy Communion. I don't know what that means yet. Um, then way back on 646, and this is probably why I want that division, because then it's abbreviations used in the end notes, the end notes. Oh, then there's a thematic index. Well, I have a thematic concordance. You know, the thematic index starts on 687 and goes to 694, whereas this is probably more than 20, 10, 20 pages, more than 10 pages here. So it'll be interesting to see how they relate. Maybe this is like the expanded version. There is also an addenda at the end. The addenda has the introduction to the Polish edition in 1981, info on the congregation of sisters of Our Lady of Mercy, info on the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. That last group is the Divine Mercy Fathers who publish this. So let's do a little bit of the preface um, just so we get a little bit of familiarity with who she is, just in case you don't know. Um, they have the page numbers are in Roman numerals. They're up here in the corner. Um, the print is probably uh, honestly Times New Roman maybe 10 or 11. It's a little smaller than I normally like. Um, the paper is very natural. It's not a really bleached out paper, but that also means it's not super shiny. So you can read it out in the sun and it should be work very well for you. Um, how are the regular page numbers? The pa page numbers are always on the outside corner. Um, it does tell you both, both sides here are going to tell you what chapter you're in. So that's helpful. You know, sometimes it tells you what book you're in on one side and what chapter you're in the other. And I'm always a little worried if people can't remember what book they're reading. <laughs> so let's see here, let's get started. In the preface, the diary of, in brackets, St. Maria Faustina is the record of her life experience, the journey of her soul. Oh, remember she wasn't originally a saint when this, maybe when this preface was written us because it's not the original preface to the Polish edition. Mm -hmm. 
but I, I, that could be what happened. The diary of Sister Maria Faustina is the record of her life experience, the journey of her soul. She was graced by a special communion with God, and the diary expresses her conviction that this communion ought to be the center of our lives. Since the 1940s, the Marians of the Immaculate Conception, St. Stan Stanislaus Kotska province, have shared this conviction and have undertaken the promulgation of God's mercy throughout the world, particularly as it has been proclaimed by St. Faustina. In 1979, convinced of the importance of the diary, the Marians were instrumental in bringing it, in its rough typewritten form, out of Poland. We made the necessary corrections to the manuscript and published a critical Polish edition that has been promulgated throughout the world to Polish-speaking people. At the same time, we commissioned a couple in Poland, Adam and Danuta Pasiki, to translate the diary into English. Once they had completed this first literal translation, we asked Archbishop George Pierce, SM, to retranslate portions of it in accordance with proper English terminology for the various theological concepts and spiritual experiences referred to throughout the diary. Archbishop Pierce was supported in the second translation by Fathers George Kosicki, Gerald Farr, Leo Macaulay, and an oblate Francis Bagan, and it gives all their different orders that they're in. So first it was done very literally, and then somebody had to go and, and you know tweak those things that, that maybe are have expressions or things instead. When that text was complete, it was given to Father Seraphim Mikolenko, MIC, who was director of the Divine Mercy Department, together with Sister Sophia, same last name. He carefully reviewed the translation offering, referring back to the original Polish to ensure exactness of expression. Whew. This goes on for another couple pages just to tell you of how careful they were with this translation, which should set a lot of your minds at ease. On page Roman numeral nine, it just tells you there are some special features in this new English edition. In the final editing processes, inconsistencies of verb tense, capitalization, and punctuation were standardized as much as possible without losing St. Faustina's unique style and powerful simplicity of expression. Our Lord's words to St. Faustina were set in bold type for emphasis, and Our Lady's words were set in italics. Wait, our ladies spoke to St. Faustina too? Did you know that, friends? This is exciting. The page numbers of St. Faustina's original notebooks were also set in bold type, and the paragraphs thought to be overly long or diversified in content were split into shorter paragraph units for readability. The footnotes too, so I'm not sure about that. Um, the footnotes too have been re-examined and additional clarifying notes have been added where necessary. Notes that were no longer pertinent in light of changes incorporated into the English translation were deleted. Oh, so if they already clarified it in the text, they didn't bother to give you a footnote about it too. That's silly. And wherever possible, explanatory notes were placed in square brackets in the text itself to avoid unnecessary breaks in reading. Interesting. Our deepest hope is that this diary may be a true vehicle. Ah, and they're showing you already how the bold of God's words for that quote are done. Very nice. The original preface, um, it's here and explains why the book should be important to you. Um, and Okay, here it's a little funny because we have introduction and this is in bold and you're like, did Jesus say that? No, down here is something that Jesus said, but this is used for subheading. So you're gonna have to clarify that in your mind. One way they could have done that differently is used a different font for um, headings and subheadings. Introduction is in italics, but it's bolded. So did Jesus and Mary say it together? Oh, I'm just saying you could have just chosen to use a different font there, perhaps. Perhaps that would have worked. So there is a little bit of an introduction. She does quote from the diary. So it's kind of more of an overview um, because the introduction is the life and call of St. Faustina. <laughs> a model for Christian perfection, St. Faustina's mission. There's even bullet points breaking down to make it a little bit easier for you to see. They've made th some things in the list. There are subheadings here. So under the mission, three, there's three A. After you have a three for a section, then there's three A. The image of the merciful Jesus. Oh, I can't find B. Oh, there it is, the Feast of Divine Mercy. See, it's, this is bolded because Jesus, and then 
you don't the next one's a header that's bolded but it kind of blends in with the thing from jesus so adding a line may help to tell you that there's a section break or using a different font so these could be a little bit difficult to find if you're a person who doesn't mind writing in books you could perhaps get a colored pen or even a black one and underline maybe the ones that are section headings or use a highlighter you could do something different there to, to help demarcate that because the print's a little bit small so adding in a lot of extras is a little difficult <laughs> then we get to the chronology of events it is running down the page again i feel like they could have gone a little further over in the margin to give you more room to read these that's just a, a little typesetting thing i would like because because there's so little room here they've had to hyphenate a bunch of words not the best especially when something's in a fairly small print hyphenating words not that great they there's nothing else here there's no reason why they couldn't have brought that table over i'm really not sure what that was the chronology events is much longer than than one might think it is and does it go up some of them go up yes it does actually go up to her canonization so what's the first thing her birth starts with her birth and goes all the way up to her canonization there's more things after her death in here than you would expect <laughs> and then it starts out with a quote that's bolded and in italics okay i was being funny earlier because it was the introduction but this is bolded and in italics i'm i am not sure <laughs> what's going on here i believe it would be a quote from jesus because it says my daughter which could be either be diligent in writing down every sentence i tell you concerning my mercy and mar my mercy the m for my is capitalized so i'm thinking that's jesus so hey divine mercy fathers if you're watching this i have some little tips for you because it's I, we want to make this book as clear as can be so people can really get the message. So here's notebook one. And when we're in the notebook, I'm not really sure of something. Why, why are there these big giant gaps here? Was there supposed to be something there? I don't know. So um, over here, See here, there's like one. I'm guessing that's entry one. Maybe the entries are numbered. But on, there's a one in parentheses and then there's a one and a two. Uh, this might have been described what it was somewhere better. And I, I missed this in the introduction. I didn't read the whole thing out to you. So I apologize for that. But over here, we have two in parentheses. But then here's three and four. I'm not sure what's going on. So we're, we would have to look up the numbering. And then this one is three. I think the things in parentheses are the number of the entry, but this is the number assigned to the writing. Um, and the writing seem to be numbered by paragraph. So similar in a way to our St. Raphael Arnez and that each letter or piece of work was numbered, but not the individual paragraphs. This one, it has both the letters or entries written is assigned a number and each paragraph is assigned a number so um that can be a, a little bit confusing as well i think they they did their best with that um that's the only thing i really have um and then there's like a little note here in brackets where it does tell you four pages left blank in here okay Um, and I see here a little hyper. So on entry number 83, paragraph 164, probation before perpetual vows. We see that little note. Let's go ahead and start chasing some of these later features. So we have the notebooks. Um, and it is probably handy. Um, they do have something there so you can see you're starting a new book and remember it's going to tell you where you are normally on both sides of the the pages there there's notebook four so it's fairly easy to see where a new one starts in Let's see notebook five so it starts with a quote again that quote appears to be bolded in italics 
But why? Because it's Sister Faustina, the Blessed Sacrament, the Congregation of the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy. What does that mean? It's from Notebook 5. I have no idea what that is. Is that a quote from Mary and Jesus? Is that the name of Notebook 5? What is that? I don't know. Again, it might have been described. There's charts in here. Just saying, did she have the chart in her notebook? Because there are a number, there are a couple of them there. It's about an exam she's doing. So interesting that she, maybe she kept some charts. Just didn't expect that. And it's pretty easy to see the bolded words that were supposed to be of Jesus. I don't know that I've, any of the italics that are supposed to be Mary have jumped out at me, but maybe they are very few. I don't know. Let's go on. Notebook six. Sorry, I'm just flipping the pages here. And if something catches my eyes, I get through notebook six, I would have stopped for you. Um, here is, remember there was one supposed to be called my preparation for Holy Communion. And this is numbered, again, it's starting over at one. I didn't even look to see if the, are the notebooks, do they start over at one? There's notebook three, so I'm really close to notebook four. Going back to this one. Aha! So each notebook starts with an entry number one. So that's important. And then when we get to whatever this is, my preparation for Holy Communion, whatever this is, she starts again with number one. So maybe this was a special notebook for this. It seems to be typed out. Um, I just wonder because the way this is spaced makes it look almost as if it's something that she typed out. I don't know. I mean, we're picking up at, at entry number 1804, but this is in her book. Um, in, in number two here, then says, the most solemn moment of my life is the moment when I receive Holy Communion. I long for each Holy Communion, and for every Holy Communion, I give thanks to the most Holy Trinity. If the angels were capable of envy, they would envy us for two things. One is the receiving of Holy Communion, and the other is suffering. I don't understand why number 1805 then has a number one next to it. Wait, shouldn't it be? Oh, because she actually wrote that number one. <laughs> it gets confusing. So in in number two, we have this number and then this number. And way over here is two. So some of these she wrote herself. Again, changing the font here may have been helpful. So this is a section that's, again, a diary, but maybe this particular notebook had a particular name, and it's very short. Um, here are the abbreviations. It's a, just a small page. Again, this is pretty standard as we've seen. Um, we've seen in our book about St. Raphael Arnez. We've seen it in the early documents of the Franciscans. Um, I think a couple other books we've seen that done. And then the end notes. Goodness. Some of these are quite lengthy. <laughs> Look at this one. This is end note one. It's all of that page. And then all of this page. Look over here. Number two is one sentence. That is in the picture. And then we go on to number three. So the end notes, don't be afraid to look them up. You'll have to put a bookmark in. There's no bookmarks or ribbon, at least in the mass market paperback edition. There are quite a few end notes. They seem to be just overall end notes. They're not done by chapter. Um... So they, yeah, they're just numbered sequentially and not per entry in here or anything like that. It There's 255, is that the end of 255 of them. Then here is the thematic index, which is pretty easy to read. It's pretty standard for how an index would be done. Um, there's a decent amount there. Then there's the addenda, the introduction to the Polish edition. So pretty easy, simple. The things at the back do get a little bit small. It's a little weird um, because we have that introduction to the Polish edition. Let me go back to the table of contents. So what does it say is next? 
<laughs> Info on the congregation of the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy. Or this is a part of the intro. I'm not entirely sure. There's a photo section in the back. They could have said that. Goodness, friends, there's a bunch of photos in the back. They did not say that. And I don't think it's a part of the introduction to the congregation. This is this is about her and her family. And then the congregation of the sisters. Then we're moving into the sisters. But this is just a section on of photos. Very surprising what all is here. And then it's going more into the sisters and the message. There's Pope John Paul II. There's her canonization. Um, this is a fairly large section. These have... Some of these have some pretty big captions there. So that's pretty interesting. And then we have... Goodness. Then there's some about Marian Press. Which is what caught my eye, because it's like Divine Mercy Resources. There's like It looks like there's ads. And I mean, there are, but there are other books on Divine Mercy. And then the little bit about the Congregation of Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy and the Marian Congregation of the Marians, the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. They, the font gets marketably smaller, and these are just two pages in the back. I'm talking marketably smaller. Um, that's got to be biggest it could be is a 10 font but there's a chance it's an eight it's th is it that small all along oh my goodness friends maybe it is that small all along what's different no it's got to be smaller here i'm going to try and curl up some pages so you can see it does look smaller over here doesn't it the spacing might have changed too or something it's definitely tighter and a little bit harder to read <laughs> get your magnifiers out and then bam it just ends they used every last page in this book so here was your sneak peek inside the diary of saint faustina should we read a tiny bit we always like to read a little bit let's read something from well, i'm at notebook two but let's see somewhere where there's a quote from jesus i'm just saying okay notebook two some quotes here where I'm on notebook two, page 349 in this mass market book. And you want to know what number it is. It is number 894. Now let's start 893, January 22nd, 1937. Today is Friday. My soul is in a sea of suffering. Sinners have taken everything away from me, but that is all right. I've given everything away for their sake that I might know that you are good and infinitely merciful. I shall be faithful to you. Come rain or shine. Number 894. Today the doctor decided that I am not to go to Mass, but only to Holy Communion. I wanted very much to assist at Mass, but my confessor, in agreement with the doctor, told me to obey. It is God's will, sister, that you should get... It has in parentheses number 260. Well, I don't know what that means. And that you must not undertake mortifications of any kind. Be obedient, sister, and God will reward you for it. I felt that the confessor's words were Jesus' words, and although it made me sad to miss Holy Mass, during which God had been granting me the grace of seeing the infant Jesus, nevertheless, I placed obedience above everything else. I became absorbed in prayer and said my penance. Then I suddenly saw the Lord, who said to me, My daughter, know that you give me greater glory by a single act of obedience than by long prayers and mortifications. Oh, how good it is to live under obedience, to live conscious of the fact that everything I do is pleasing to God. <laughs> Lovely. January 23rd. This is the eight number, number 895. January 23rd, 1937. I did not feel like writing today. Then I heard a voice in my soul. My daughter, you do not live for yourself, but for souls. Write for their benefit. You know that my will as to your writing has been confirmed many times by your confessors. You know what is pleasing to me, and if you have any doubts about what I am saying, you also know whom you are to ask. I grant him light to pronounce judgment on my case. My eyes watch. My eye watches over him. My daughter, you are to be like a child towards him, full of simplicity and candor. Put his judgment above all my demands. He will guide you according to my will. If he doesn't allow you to carry out my demands, be at peace. I will not judge you, but the matter will remain between me and him. You are to be obedient." Um, and that is, again, from Notebook 2. So there's a little sample of 
the writing. I hope you get out and try it. If you've probably all heard of the book, you've probably heard of the devotion, um, and you may enjoy to get to the book and read it for yourself. Not little snippets and quotes, not even the one act, one person play, but to get out and really read it and see what it's all about. Um, especially in this year of the Eucharist, knowing that that is actually part of her name. So this year of the Eucharist, let's get out and read the diary of St. Faustina and see what she has to say on the subject or what Jesus and Mary have to say on the subject. I'm excited to give this a deeper look. I, I've flipped through it and read bits of it before and I haven't sat and really read it. Now this book does lend itself to nightly reading. Read a little bit before bed. This is that kind of book. So if you need a book for that purpose, this could be a nice nightly reading. I, I think it will bless you. Now don't forget friends to stay tuned. Next week I'm going to do a review of the thematic concordance, the full one that came as a separate standalone book. There's a small one in the back here, but let's dive into this next. God bless you friends.